Allison Hartson running as a Justice Democrat. Hi, Allison. How are you? Hey, I am doing great. I love the energy in here. There, there's so much going on. <laughs> There is a lot going on. Yes. I I saw your new commercial. Oh, can I show it? Yeah. So you guys talk, and I'm going to find it. All right. So I know that he said you guys talk, but what he really meant is why don't you go ahead and talk, right? Because we're not guys. And let me tell you right now, the world knows when you're a woman, just look at my pay, my income, right? Mm. So to Allison, good to see you. Good to see you, too. So um, really... What are the three things we should know about you if we just met you? You should know that I most recently ran a national nonprofit organization to get money out of politics in order to uh, be able to end corruption and save our democracy. You should know that I was also a public high school teacher for 10 years. Really? And <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, and then you should also know that my experience working in politics, working on getting legislation passed through the state legislatures has led me to know that if we're going to get Medicare for all, college for all, higher wages, living wages, tied to inflation, green economy to replace our, our, our military economy. We're going to have to do it ourselves. That's why I'm running for office. And I am in just about every single poll that lists me. I am statistically tied. We are beating everybody in social media, small dollar donations, you name it. We are on fire right now. Two days left. Okay. So some people would say, oh my God. Why are you going up against Diane Feinstein? Are you an ageist? What are you thinking? What are you doing? Diane is terrific. What would you respond to that? Uh, well, <laughs> clearly you haven't been paying attention. No, <laughs> no look, look, um, you know, as far as, as the, we all, I think we have to start with what we agree on. And we agree that Diane, no, we agree that we have to end corruption. That's where we have to start. And we can agree that corruption does not discriminate. It attacks both parties and it's coming from both parties, which means there's really one party, the establishment party, the corporatist party. That's what we're talking about. And so we have to be really honest with ourselves as a progressive movement fighting corruption to look at ourselves and our own party not just the other party, if we're really serious about fixing this. And as far as I'm concerned, the, the most dangerous enemy is the one that looks just like you, the one that you can't see, and that is our own party. So we have to be willing to run against Democrats and Republicans if they are ultimately the epitome of the very corruption that we are fighting. And quite frankly, Dianne Feinstein is. All you have to look at is, is who donates to her campaign. She takes money from defense contractors. She takes money from the pharmaceutical industry. She doesn't support Medicare for all as a, a, as a result. She voted for the Iraq war. She supports Medicare for some. For some. That's right. That's right. We got that that out there. Um, and and so, you know, she she takes money from the telecom industry. And as a result, she has voted for the Patriot Act every single time. So look at her donations. Look at her votes. Let's have honest conversations and be willing to accept responsibility as a Democratic Party or as independents who are really going to step back and look at the entire system as a whole, which is what my, my point is. So what's going to happen? So they... So what's this thing in the primary that the top two, what, what's that about? Yeah, really important for people to know that they, they, we have a new system in California. It's relatively new in the last few years. So am I looking here? Yeah, the, you're, you're, you're good okay. right there. You're okay, good. Right good. There. Perfect. Um, so the, the, the way that it works is it's a top two primary jungle system. And you can read more about it. I'll explain it right now. But read more about it, too, at my website, alisonhartson.com slash vote. Is that what it is? Yes, it's a slash vote. And uh, and so the top two, no matter what party you are, can, are going to, to make it into the general. And so that primary vote is on June 5th, which means two Democrats could make it into the general as opposed to before. It would be the top Republican and the top Democrat. And you're closed off in that way. By by running the top two, you make it more possible for a third party to, to actually get into the top two and make it into the general. You also make it so that progressive 
conservatives and the underdog Democrats can can actually get into the general against the incumbent, which otherwise just clears the Democratic Party in the general every single time. So it doesn't matter what party you are. You don't have to change your party. You can vote for me, which is which is, I, I think, a, a definite win for <laughs> democracy in that regard. And uh, and so we just have to. And this is really interesting and I think important for strategic reasons how we're going to vote on June 5th, unless you've already voted, of course, because of mail-in ballots. So the way this works is, you know, uh, we, we should vote our conscience, but we should also vote strategically and understand that we're not voting for who's going to take first place on June 5th. We can pretty much predict that it's going to be incumbent Diane Feinstein. I wouldn't be surprised if we have like a wicked upset, though. But I'll just say <laughs> what we're really <laughs> voting for is who's going to take second place. Who do we want to be in the top two? Who do we want to be second place? And when we come back to that, it's who has the best chance of doing that. Every single number, just about every single metric we have shows that I am right there, neck and neck. We absolutely have this. But the next question is, who has the best chance of beating Dianne Feinstein in November? And you put, you juxtapose her, the establishment, to a true, real progressive. I, and I'll, I'll give you an example. Less than 5% of the money that she has collected for this election alone comes from small dollar donors, $200 or less. Oh, no. The rest of it, the rest of her $15 million <laughs> coffers for this election come from $5 million is her own money that she gave herself, and the rest comes from large dollar donors and super PACs. My campaign, 72% from small dollar donations and not a single pack. I refuse all of them. So that is how you run a true grassroots, true progressive campaign that allows you the freedom to vote on your conscience in office and vote for the policies that we need on behalf of the people. And you get me in there against Dianne Feinstein for the general. It's a no brainer. You get like an establishment light person. You get people. The rest of the candidates in this entire race are either funded by large dollar donors and or PACs or or they are self-funded. I'm the only one running with this kind of these kinds of donations. Get me in there on June 5th. It's over. Okay. Guaranteed. So I want to show this commercial. Nice. By the way, Tim Black posted a cool cool video of you guys with those things where you're voting at a Kevin DeLeon. He did? Yes. Did you see that? Did I, I must have missed it. And uh, it, 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 the Kevin DeLeon did not look like he wanted oh, to be paddles, there. Oh, the, the paddles. The yes, no paddles. Yes, yes, yes. It's the lightning He's rim. He's just sitting there like, oh, Jesus, man. <laughs> yeah. You know you're not on camera right now. Oh, I'm not on camera? No, remember. Oh, so anyway. Remember, because oh. you, oh, you did a wide so here, shot. I'm going to show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> take that picture. I love it. <laughs> I'm Diane, show, take that picture. I wanted okay. to go big screen. Right That's great. So I here's her it. video. No, here, on here. Here we go. And it's. And it's uh, entitled, If You're Not a Nazi, You're Not a Story. That's what she tweeted out. I was like, whoa, what is that? I know, I, well, that shocked me. <laughs> I know, I was like, come on, she's really, here we go. I'm Allison Hartson, and I've never slept with a porn star. I've also never <laughs> called anyone a China person, nor am I a Nazi. That's why the media isn't covering my campaign. I have been a public school teacher for 10 years and led a national nonprofit to end political corruption. But that doesn't raise anyone's ratings. So media would rather give billions in free advertising to clowns and actual Nazis. I'm going to fight for Medicare for all, higher wages, and college education for your kids. I'm Allison Hartson, and I approve this message because you deserve somebody who's going to represent you, not corporate donors. So there you go. And uh, that's a great commercial. And uh, uh, now, did you consult with Keith Ellison on this? Or how does this work? How does that work? Do you guys just get to do whatever you want? or how does it, It's lovely. It's so nice when you aren't accepting any kind of donations except from the very people that you are fighting for and speaking on behalf of. You get to do this kind of stuff. Now, Allison, it makes it fun, actually. Yeah. So now here is... Uh, First of all, um, we just had Kenneth Mejia in here, and uh, he's a Green Party guy. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know where they get off thinking that they can participate in democracy. <laughs> anyway, um, so a lot of people would. So you're running as a justice Democrat. So you're inside the Democratic Party that has actively been cheating progressives up and down the ballot. 
And my question is, uh, why do other countries get to have three and four parties? And in America, even the people who want to, you know, should be outside of it, decide to stay inside of it. Yeah. So uh, what, 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 how do you uh, square that circle? It's, it, it was a really difficult decision for me, Jimmy, honestly, because for me, it's strategic. Uh-huh. And this is all about strategy for our movement. And and when when I say like one of my slogans is policy over politics, policy uh-huh. over party. So I really mean it like I don't think that we should be looking at party at all. So, you know, what that means is if if strategically the way that we are have a better chance of getting elected is by running as a Democrat, then run as a Democrat. If we can do it as a green, then do it as a green. The policies don't change. My values don't change. What I'm going to vote for and what I'm going to be fighting for don't change at all, especially if I'm not taking money from the same donors that have turned the Democratic Party into what they have. And the same thing with the Republican Party as well. Now, if this strategy were to not work, then we come back and we do it a different way. But when you break down the numbers here in California in particular— no matter how much people are screaming and stomping and throwing fits about about corruption in the establishment, they still go back to voting the same way. I know it's, it's frustrating. Uh, that's that's super frustrating. And again, if people actually did vote their conscience, we could actually. It's funny they go, well, you can't vote for a third party until a lot of people are already voting for that third party. It's like, well, you, you. yeah. But, uh, and, and I agree with you. I mean, I, I say this. I think the same thing. Like, well, if everybody would just do it then we would just have it done already. Yeah, we would just, I know. So, um, now Kevin DeLeon is your major, uh, he's your big competition because everyone just assumes Diane Feinstein is going to get, she didn't, but she did not get the endorsement of the Democratic Party, right? Right, right. Were you shocked at that? Was I shocked? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if shocked. I was, I was, I was definitely, I guess a little bit shocked. I was. Yeah, I mean, you kind of expected it to go that way. I I wouldn't have, I wasn't I wouldn't have been surprised if it went to Kevin DeLeon because he's also their like, you know, their their bread and butter as well. So uh-huh. uh, the fact that they blocked it from both of them actually, and 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 the thing that that has not been reported in the mainstream news, shocker, is the real reason why neither of them got the endorsement, and it's because Bernie delegates have. St- Stayed inside of the Democratic Party and held down the fort in order to push back on the way they run the California Democratic Party. So I voted in that election to elect the delegates to the Democratic Party statewide. Steph did, too. And we thought we took over the party because we had the majority of delegates. Turns out there's super delegates at the state level also. Mm-hmm. And that's why... Um, uh, Anthony, not Anthony. Who's the, who, what's the guy's name? Bauman is the chair. Eric, Eric Bauman. Yeah. Eric Bauman. Boo! Because there's super delegates at the state. So such a corrupt, cheating organization. Which Kevin DeLeon, as senator, has also used his super delegates in order to control votes, too. That's it's the that's the a, game they play. So it's just like the Democratic Party. It's just, ugh. Yeah. So I just, but I vote, but you know, my thing is you vote for progressives no matter where they are, right? If so, I, I always vote for progressives. But I don't know if you know also that you're not a... You, I just tried to explain to Kenneth Mejia he's not allowed to participate in democracy. You Didn't you know that you're also not allowed to participate in democracy because there was already a progressive running for Senate? Oh, so right. That's it. That's right. the limit. Whoever raises their hand first that's is it. the one that that's we should it. all just... You know that. Yeah. Hey, listen, I like that guy, David. I've had him on my show, and uh, I'm, I'm going to mispronounce his last name. David Hildebrand, did I yeah, say that's it right? Yeah, that's right. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, he's a fine gentleman. Everyone, He's a progressive. He's got great p- positions. I know you personally, and I've seen you get stuff done working for Wolfpack. Mm-hmm. And um, I just think you have a better chance of beating Dianne Feinstein. Well, and I do. so mm-hmm. that's why I'm supporting you. And, I, because I'm, and this idea that uh, I have to explain to people that once there's a progressive in the race, that's it. You can't get in. Nobody else. You know, that's why Bobby Kennedy didn't get in until, I don't know. Remember when he ran? Steph, we were watching that documentary. There was uh, already like three, or, three already primaries happened, and then he jumps in. Anyway, so <laughs> my point is everybody gets to participate in democracy, 
And, uh, you know, they st- Steny Hoyer got caught saying on tape, hey, there's a decision been made. You, you saw that, right? Mm-hmm. It was the Intercept mm-hmm. uh, that released that. Yeah. And uh, so that's what I feel like. Really, has there been a decision been made by progressives before the election? Now, who gets right. to be the... So, I mean, I guess I'm answering the question for you because it drives me <laughs> fucking crazy. It does. It's 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 really frustrating and it's it's antithetical to democracy and exactly what we're fighting for. Yeah. And we can't say that we're progressives and then say no and do do exactly what the Democratic Party is doing. Yes. And say, no, we, we've decided who's going to run and you have to ask our permission before you go and run. That that we, we're, If we start in any way, shape or form making decisions like that because we make exceptions because we're in power and we have good intentions so it's okay for us we are no better than them and we are only I, headed down the same exact path I know it was it seemed eerily similar to what happened during the Bernie camp you're not allowed to do you're going to hurt her in the primary what are you doing you got holy shit it's like it seemed like that's what it seems like to me and and you know hey if <laughs> If I was already running and you got in, I would be upset. Like, God damn. It. Yeah. That's a that's a bummer, right? But that was a, that's called an election. You have to run it. And it's like, okay, we got to get over this hill. And if you're a real leader, you figure out a way to do it. Thank you. And that's really been the thing for me, too, is this really comes down to leadership. Because my experience working in Wolfpack, working and getting policies through l- state legislatures is... There's, there are two things that we have really got to understand. There is a difference between um, politics and policy. And you have to understand the politics of getting policy passed and in order to actually be effective. And that leadership that we need is, is critical to be able to sit down at a table. It's like running a business when you're actually in office. You have to learn how to bring the right people to the table, how to ask the right questions, how to listen, how to move forward, despite the fact that there's opposition surrounding you, you and you don't know who to trust. It's not just a matter of, of, of being a policy wonk. It's not just a matter of, of having all the right answers and reading books. It has to be that and leadership skills and understanding the politics of all of this. And that that's what I bring to this. Okay, I, I have a question. You look like you're uh, from privilege. And it looks like you haven't had any kind of hard knocks. And what could you possibly understand about desperate people when they're challenged with medical problems? <laughs> well, uh, I was I was born to a, a working class family. My both of my parents struggled and I wrote about this. Actually, I'll, I'll explain it right now. But uh, anybody can find me on Medium or go to my website, AllisonHartson.com and read my articles. Uh, there's one I wrote about uh, just one example of me dealing of my family dealing with the struggles of being able to afford health, uh, being able to afford health care. And um, in in that struggle, uh, I have several people in my family who have passed away and uh, and then in passing away by not being able to really get the medical treatment fully that they need and obviously deserve, I have left their family in uh, in quite a bit of debt. My my father, when he passed away when I was 20, left us in uh, a million, nearly a million dollars in debt. And uh, my stepmom um, struggled quite a bit from there. So I'd encourage you to read the article. But, uh, you know, the, I have one story after another about how health care has affected my family, about how income inequality has affected my family, and uh, and still is to this day. And I actually did, I just did an interview with Katie Helper on TYT. That's also posted on my Twitter. You can go and, and watch that where we talk about it. Um, but no, all of these policies are personal for me. And I think that that's really key because when we're talking about also the uh, who to vote for and, and, the, and fighting the establishment, it, it's, it is money and politics and that kind of corruption. But it's also a class war that we're in right now. And, and, and those who are currently holding office, by and large, at the federal level, state level, um, they are part of the wealthy elite. And it makes them, for the most part, there might be an exception here and there, but for the most part, uh, definitely like incapable of, of being able to empathize with us and being able to understand the v- very real struggles we face every day. Are we going to put gas in the car today or are we going to go ahead and buy uh, that medicine that we need? Or can we just go one more day without that medicine and, and put gas in the car and go see my cousin I haven't seen in a month? I mean, I know that's such a strange example, but these are just little things that we have to decide day to day. And when you're part of that elite class and you don't have that struggle, um, it's difficult, if not impossible, to make decisions about legislation 
nation that governs our lives. So you've uh, so pretty li- lived life of privilege then. <laughs> That's what I got out of it. You were paying attention. What happened? So she flies first yes, class. Yes, yes. The 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 point is, <laughs> silver spoon in this <laughs> mouth. <laughs> You don't even have kids and you have a nanny. Am I, is that correct? <laughs> you, know, you know what? Um, wh- one really, really quick thing I would add to that, too, is, and I, I think that's a fair question you ask, because when I was a teacher, I, I taught in a low-income district. My students were predominantly first and second generation students from Mexico. And they often shared with me, eventually, once they got more comfortable with me and the year went on, that they also thought that I was privileged. I was just this like <laughs> typical white woman. And I don't blame them. I, I don't blame them at all. But as I would open up and share my stories with them, because I always felt it was, I feel it's important to lead by example. And so if I asked my students to write a story where they were being vulnerable, I would always do the same thing and use that as an example first. And we had just amazing, rich discussions throughout the year. And, and my students would tell me time and again, every single year, Ms. Hartson, I really assumed that you were like a typical privileged white woman. And, uh, and it, it, it's crazy. You've been through, some of them would say, you've been through more than I have. And I would tell them, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, we all go through struggles. We, we are all in this together. Uh, it's just a matter of how we're going to, to move through it together. And you are, you are just as strong and capable, et cetera. And so um, it, I think that assumption is fair. And, and so I, I'm glad you asked that. I don't know, man. Grown up white, no picnic. <laughs> <clears throat> I gotta tell you, huh? Whoa, whoa. I got no respect over him. I right? Ooh. Anyway, all right. Well, Allison Hartson, um, there has I've only seen the one poll about how you're polling, and it was very close. Everyone's very close, within two percentage points of each other, except for, of course, the great Diane Feinstein. And uh, she is for Medicare for some, and you got to give it to her. I mean, that's such <laughs> Have a Have you good... seen the commercial she has out? She has it for 55 and older. Yeah, right? but she starts it out saying, I support universal health care. Yeah. Well, who you know, doesn't? she like uses that buzzword to yeah. trick people. That is a trick. Mm hmm. That's, that, that's different than being for single payer. That's different than being for Medicare for all. Yep. Right? So this. Yep. Okay. So uh, I love that. I love Medicare for some. We're going to drop it to 55. So if I'm 54, I have to what? Go broke? Yep. Why, yep. why can't you go to 54? And if you go 54, why can't? So because if because everyone knows it's more efficient and saves money and everybody. Oh. So we, we were just in Oslo, Norway. We were talking about how everyone's relaxed there because no one has to worry about like health care getting sick. Nobody, Can you imagine? Yeah. Nobody has to worry the, about their kids. Like they're, when their kids are born, they don't have to start saving for college the moment they're born. Right. Because their college is free. The, you, you, uh, Americans can go to college for free in Norway. Did you know that stuff? No. I did. I the, found the it out. The toll it's <laughs> taking on like everybody... <laughs> Yeah, the toll that it's taking on our small business owners, the toll that it's taking on workers being right. stuck at a shitty job. Excuse my language, oh, but like the, you not, know, being stuck and not being able to uh, move to another job because they, the, this job provides health care. The the toll that it, it it takes on us in a, in a number of ways. It's uh, it's just a no brainer. And she only said that she's willing to lower it to fifty five just because of this election. I know that's how much she's moving well, just she, to be able to first trick she people. She was saying that. Well, if, it, if if Medicare for all means a complete takeover of, of health care by the government, I'm not there yet. Mm-hmm. You, she goes, you know goddamn well that's not what it is, Diane, because you and all your friends have been on Medicare for the last 20 years. So you know exactly how it works. It's you not know it's not, a, it's not a government takeover. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's what that's what drives me nuts about her. She just she just gaslights people right to their face. And people know it. They think people don't know it. They have the internet now. People know it. And that's why this show exists. Well, listen... Uh, Allison, thanks for coming in. I really, uh, uh, we get, so Anthony Rendon is the target. You got to get that guy. And he's just, you know, uh, uh, just, uh, he's just more of the same. Anthony A really Rendon. strong progressive Democratic delegate is running against Rendon in his district right now. I can't remember her full name. But Maria, Maria Estrada. Maria Estrada. Maria Estrada. Oh, yeah, she's talking next. about. Oh, good. Oh, good, 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 good. You're going to be running into her momentary. Lovely. All right, listen. Um, good luck on Tuesday. Thank you. And keep being a badass. Thank you. I will do my best. Our next live Jimmy Dore show is July 1st in Portland, Oregon, and July 15th in Chicago, Illinois. We're doing a live show July 15th in Chicago, Illinois. Go to a link right there for all the tickets to all the live Jimmy Dore shows. Plus, 
If you can help become a pro premium member, we give you hours of bonus material every week. Become a patron or a premium member. And if you're on Steam It, we're steaming it right now. Plus, every Saturday, we do a live Super Solid Chat Saturday where it's a live stream and you can ask us questions and we'll answer them back every Saturday, <laughs> 2 p.m. Pacific time. Thanks for your support. Mm -hmm.